I'm sure many of you were waiting on me to talk about this story right here involving um, Chad Wheeler, who plays for the Seattle. Well, at this point, he probably going to be formally played for the Seattle Seahawks um, in the domestic dispute that he got in with his girlfriend. Now, I don't know what his girlfriend's name is at the moment. Maybe by the time this video gets uploaded, they will have her name. But I will understand why they don't put her name out there. The only thing we know now is that his girlfriend is indeed a black woman. Now, what happened was there was a huge domestic dispute that happened between both of them. And, of course, with him being a football player, he definitely got the best of her. And I'll show you the images as I go along. Now, what's interesting here is when I typed his name into the search bar of Google for images, I typed Chad Wheeler girlfriend and see if I could find a picture of them together or Chad Wheeler domestic violence. Every time I type something in, it was just a picture of him, never of them together. Like you had to go online to like Twitter to find a picture of her like you. I could not find a picture of her in Google or nothing. It's almost like they're tr they're trying to keep that isolated, even though the incident involved her. But I'm going to go ahead and but we but I found them. So and you'll see what I'm talking about later on in the video. Chad Wheeler, backup offensive tackle for the Seattle Seahawks, was arrested early Saturday morning on charges of domestic violence and assault, according to the Seattle Times. Wheeler, age 27, was arrested after local police in Kent, Washington, responded to a 911 call from his girlfriend, the alleged victim. The police report reviewed by the Seattle Times said the officers heard screaming from inside the apartment when they arrived. They forced their way into the apartment and headed to the bathroom where the screaming was continuing. The police found Wheeler standing beside the victim. According to the report, Wheeler was initially uncooperative when officers attempted to arrest him. So he was resisting. It is amazing they didn't put resisting there. They said uncooperative. Wheeler is accused of throwing the woman on the bed and strangling, strangling her until she lost consciousness. When she awoke, Wheeler allegedly said, wow, you're alive. The fact that he even said that he made it seem like, oh, I thought I killed you. That's what was going through his mind. So just the fact that he even said that they should move that up to attempted murder. She then ran into the bathroom and locked herself in where she called 911. Wheeler then allegedly picked the lock to the bathroom and forced his way in, which is where the responding officers found him. The police report said that the fight began when Wheeler asked the victim to bow to him and she refused. It is also said that Wheeler has not been taking his prescribed medication for bipolar disorder. Here we go. Here it is. Wheeler is listed as six foot seven and three hundred ten pounds in the report, and the victim is listed as a, as five nine, five foot nine, and one hundred and forty five pounds. She went to the hospital to receive treatment for arm pain and other injuries. The Seahawks released a brief statement regarding the charges against Wheeler. We are aware of the situation and are still gathering information. Wheeler played five games for the Seahawks during the 2020 season and is a restricted free agent. The Seattle Times reported that Wheeler was still being held in King County Jail on Monday night. Bail has been set at $400,000. The fact that he even has a bail and he has not been cut from the team by now, mind you, this happened on Saturday. It is currently Tuesday when I'm recording this video. Meanwhile, with what happened with Ray Rice and his now wife, Janae Rice, they quickly was they were quick to get him off the team when what happened with adrian peterson and him disciplining his son they were quickly to get him removed but then you gotta think also this doesn't surprise anyone because look what happened with the kicker nick brown in with the giants a couple years ago they dragged that out for as long as they possibly could until they felt pressure from the people to release him but then again ben roethlisberger is still playing uh what's his name the one that was saying the n-word at that festival He's still, as far as I know, still playing. Riley Cooper, as far as I know, he's still playing. But you know what they all have in common. And speaking of, he kind of looks like Riley Cooper just a little bit. But yeah, I'm going to pause the video right quick and I'm going to show you pictures of his girlfriend. I'm going to show you pictures of how she looks regular and how she, and then I'm going to show you a picture of how she looked after he like savagely beat her. So this right here is a just a regular everyday picture of his girlfriend right here just you know regular made up picture of her in her normal state wait till you see the next one completely different way different than what 
he uh, than the previous picture. It doesn't even look like the same person. So you can look at her face. You can tell that she definitely, he definitely bruised her up. He, you know, hit her definitely in the face. You can look at her neck area and see the, the red around her neck from when he was strangling her. And he said that I thought you would. He said, you're still alive, basically implying that I thought I killed you. Now, I read somewhere else. I don't know how true this is. It said that after he was strangling her and she went into unconsciousness. Now, this was before she got up and ran to the bathroom that apparently he went and sat down and ate dinner while she was laid out on the floor and thinking that she was dead. Man, if they don't move that up to mur to attempted murder, that's palm color privilege in the flesh. Now, I'm going to say this. I did a video recently about this uh, black woman who was in Harlem who got attacked viciously and brutally by these black males. Because remember, I called them black males. I can't even call them men. And I think it was three of them. In which they, you know, attacked her because she refused to buy them a bottle of wine or bottles of wine. And how they viciously attack her and one bit her and tried to bite her eye out. And that right there still rattles my mind, like how someone could even try to attempt to do that. She said she was mauled and everything like that. I would not be surprised if a lot of these divest individuals and some of the usual suspects went and said how bad black men are to and for black women just off of that one incident, you know, because those three apparently represent the entire black male population. I want them to keep that same energy when it comes to this story right here. But many of them will not talk about it. You can probably even go through some of their channels by the end of this week or whenever, and they probably will have not talked about it. Why? Because they never talk about these type of stories. But I know they talked about that one in Harlem because that's right up their alley. That's right, that's a, a huge case study for them. And if they do talk about this, they'll find a way to talk about it and blame black men and something like that or how a black man should have protected her. Or if she was, you know, if black men were better, she would have been with a black man and not with him. And, you know, basically letting him off the hook. Like their narrative never, never switches up. It never changes. But I hope she does get her life together and she moves on because, you know, a lot of battered women go and um, go right back to the person thinking that it was their fault. It's a psychological thing. Now, let's just hypothetically say that this man was bipolar and I don't know if he is truly bipolar because, you know, they can just clearly say, you know, they can say it. But then again, he might be because they actually now have given a mental illness. Usually they'll say that they just suffered from a mental illness. Let's say that hypothetically he is. Why would you not pay attention to his meds or make sure that he was taking them? And I would not be surprised if this was the first, if this was not the first encounter, but this was probably one of the more serious ones as well. This is the one that sent her to the hospital and almost killed her. She almost died. Now, I'm curious to see what the players in the locker room are going to do as it pertains to, uh, you know, this situation right here, are they going to deal with it? Or is he even, even allowed to come back and play for the team? I don't know. At this point, that is in the Seattle Seahawks organization and up to the NFL. I have no dog in this fight. I just report this news. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. If you haven't done so already, please text the number that is pinned down in the comments below so you can receive notifications every time I upload a new video. And I'll talk to you in the next one.